New Blue Titler Live is a powerful graphics and character generator built for live productions. Whether you want to use Titler Live with a virtual switcher or a physical piece of hardware, New Blue has made it simple to incorporate professional graphics into your production. Titler Live Broadcast encompasses all of the amazing features of this powerful software and has seamless integration with streaming platforms, sports software, Excel spreadsheets, and even design software like After Effects and Photoshop. Overall, there's just a lot to tackle with this software, but let's hit on some of the basics. The very first thing you want to do is decide your project resolution and frame rate. This can be found under Settings and Project Settings. You can select resolutions from SD to 4K. For this project, I'll use 1080p 2997. Titler Live is broken up into five main sections. The Library, the Edit Preview window, the Playlist section, the Attributes window, and the Live Monitor. The interface can be laid out in a number of different ways. The View menu at the top has some layout presets, and you can also pop out each window to suit your needs. The library window is where you can access designs and inputs. Here is where you can choose from a number of different templates. Hovering over one of these graphics will allow you to view it in the edit preview window. The library has a ton of templates including crawls, title screens, bugs, lower thirds, and a number of other graphics to suit your needs. Once you find a graphic that you like, you can drag it into a playlist. This section will contain all of the graphics that you want to use in your program. The play button on the far right of each layer will allow you to play the graphic. Once toggled, this graphic will then appear in the live monitor. You can also create multiple playlists if you want to keep everything neat and organized. Each playlist you have can have an unlimited number of graphic layers, and each layer can have an unlimited number of graphics. Each playlist will also act as an independent NDI output, making it much easier to tackle complicated productions. You can have up to 16 4K NDI outputs. With a design now selected in the playlist, you can edit the template. For quick sizing and position changes, you can manipulate the template in the Edit Preview window. You can edit text by clicking on the text you want to change, and this is perfect if you have a lower third that needs to be changed on the fly during a production. Adjustments can also be made in the Attributes window. Because this is a relatively simple graphic, there are not many things to edit, but the more complex the graphic, the more attributes there are to adjust. An example of this would be this sports scoreboard. If you want to make more complex changes to a template, you can open the Title Design window. You can do this in the Attributes menu, or by right-clicking the design in your playlist and selecting Edit. This design window is split up into four main sections. Attributes, the Viewer window, Library, and the Timeline. The timeline displays the full duration of the graphic and all of the objects that make up the graphic. On the top of the timeline, you can see this graphic has set regions. This means that when you hit the play button on the graphic, it will play through the sequence up until it reaches the end region, and it will pause there for as long as you want. When you hit stop on the graphic, it will play out the end sequence. You can drag these regions around to make changes. To edit text or an object, you can select it on the timeline or in the viewer. Any changes to an object can then be made using the Attributes menu. For text, you have all of your usual style settings. For objects like this rectangle, you have 3D settings like Extrusion, Shininess, and you can adjust the bevel. There's also transform controls like position, rotation, and scale, as well as opacity, radius, and skew. 
When you're done editing your graphic, you can either select the check mark or the X in the bottom right hand corner. The check mark will save all of your changes, the X will discard them. Either way, you will go back to the main interface. If you want to build a graphic from scratch, you can also do this. Just right click on your playlist and select new. Then you can either double click or right click and select edit. Changing the duration of a graphic can be done here. I want to extend it to five seconds. Then I want to adjust my regions to reflect the change in length. The length and visibility of objects in the timeline can be adjusted easily by dragging the ends and moving them in the timeline wherever you want. There are a few ways to create objects to use in your graphic. In the library window, you can access pre-made shapes like these circles. And there are even a ton of project templates, including titles, bugs, and sports and social media graphics to help you build or inspire your designs. In the upper right hand corner, there are selections to either add text, add audio, or add a shape. This square I created can be moved and resized freely in the edit window. In the attributes window, I can change the color, and with the transform controls, I can fine tune the size and position. I can even skew the shape to make it more dynamic. I want this shape to sit underneath my text, so if I right click on it and select arrange layers, I can send it to the back. I can also add a transition for this shape by going in the library and selecting transitions from the dropdown. I'll choose a simple fly-in and drag and drop it on my shape layer in the timeline. Now my shape will fly in and I can make any adjustments to this transition in the transition section of the attributes menu. If instead I want to start off with a pre-made template input or shape, I can choose that in the library and drag it into the edit window. It can then be arranged and edited like demonstrated earlier. In the library, you can also choose styles for all your shapes. These styles can also be applied to text as well. When you're done building graphics and it's time to go live with your production, we first need to choose an output. On the bar on the top, there is a video out menu. You can choose from NDI, HDMI, a PNG sequence, or a watch folder. You can also output with SDI key and fill for use with compatible switchers. If you're using OBS, you can also send your graphics directly into the program with the new blue Titler Live OBS plugin. Selecting HDMI will create an output window. You can then attach your computer to a switcher via HDMI, like the ATEM mini series from Blackmagic Design. Selecting a key color for your HDMI output will let you key out the background, leaving just the graphic on your screen. If your switcher supports NDI, this is going to be your easiest option because NDI has an alpha channel and won't require any keying. Simply add NDI as a source and you can send graphics over your network directly to your switcher. Since each playlist is an NDI output, we can have a multitude of NDI inputs to choose from on our software. The Titler Live software from New Blue is a comprehensive solution for the bare bones graphic players you'll get with many of the switchers on the market. For more information on any of the great software solutions from New Blue, check out our website at onesourcevideo.com.